Welcome to the Airbnb house. This is Adobe's Pillow Talk. We are live at Sundance 2016. It is crazy in here because some drinks are flowing over there. I know you can't see that. The snow's coming down, you can't see that. But we got filmmakers that are joining me in bed all week long. And we have a very special one for you today. By the way, I need your questions. Definitely gonna need your help with this one. We have an editor, Bachi Nenemansky, who's here. He edited Deadpool, amongst a bunch of other stuff. Bachi, come in bed with me, buddy. Okay. Oh, you're stay there. No, no, I want to do the steamroller. Uh, steamroller. Yeah. Steamroller. Oh. Oh, I like to enter like Nice. Is that good? is the most impressive entrance we've steamroller. had so far. Steamroller. Uh, do we break the mic? You guys can still hear me good? Nice. Audio good. See, I'm gentle like that. Uh, Bachi, what's good, buddy? Nothing, just hanging. This is uh, my first time at Sundance, so it's been quite exceptional. And I don't believe you. You know why I don't believe you? What? Why? Because you're, you're Sundance chic. You have the burnt orange corduroy pants. They're the only clean ones I had <laughs> when I left clean, L.A. Yeah. Dude, come on. You got the boots, the steel toe boots from the 1930s that, like, guys who were making cars in Detroit would yeah. make. Yeah. Well, you know? I grew up in Detroit, so that would make sense. That we makes very sense in much. tune. We are in tune. Nice. Uh, great. So, very yeah, cool. but no, it's amazing. Amazing time so far. It's um, crazy. This okay. has been the best. I'm, my back's been hurting all day, so. This is actually yeah, really nice. Yeah, settle in, buddy. Uh, okay, you're an editor. Yes. <laughs> and But you are an editor who just wrapped up a big major motion film in Deadpool, right? Yes. Which is a little bit different from the independent film vibe going on here at Sundance. So yes. when, you, when you walk the streets and you hear, does it kind of take you back to your early days? And some of the things that you were doing to try to get your film career popping? Totally, yeah. I mean, everyone's always struggling, and every filmmaker's always trying to like, go on to the next big, bigger, best thing. But you got to remember where you came from, and you just got to grind it out. And like, to be here in bed with you is like one of the rewards <laughs> after all those this long years. This is a reward? <laughs> long years uh, of grinding. But no, to, but to be honest, like Sundance is an amazing time. You do get to meet people. You get to see films that are, could be shitty, could be amazing. You never know. Right. It's a toss-up. There were some walkouts last night. <laughs> right, um, there so, were. Yeah, things like that happening. But... To be part of the process and to be able to do what I love is the biggest reward, to be honest. Not being cheesy, I know it's super cheesy, but screw it, it's the truth. Sometimes cheese is also true. Cheese. Those two things can coexist yeah, yeah, yeah. at the same time. Uh, so let's talk about editing Deadpool. Uh, your biggest project to date, right? Yes, but I wasn't the editor. I was part of the editing team, part of the post-production team. My role was to work with the three lead editors, or okay. the, the whole team, train them how to use Premiere Pro, train them on how to, to fit inside the system that they're doing because there's like so much crazy stuff going on in Deadpool that you couldn't do on certain other platforms. Right. We had to have a specific workflow and my job was to come in on my white horse and just like magic wand everything so it worked. Well, what's, I think what's super rad is, I mean, being able to use the exact same software. Totally. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. if I just want to go shoot something in my backyard and chop it up together really quick, and the same, same guys that use Deadpool. Totally, totally. We were just talking about that. I just got out of the panel. Do I look right. at you at the camera? Uh, we can do both. Okay. So questions, just, by the way. Questions in your we comments We just got section. out of the panel, and we finished it with the same software that, that you can download for 19 bucks. Like, right. literally, just, just want Premiere Pro is like 19 bucks. We're using right. the same stuff. And the feedback we get from everyone, like the problems or things they don't like or the features they want, just tell Adobe, because they're actually going to make a change. And, that's what I learned. I worked with Fincher and, and I worked on Gone Girl on the editorial team. And all the things that we fixed there is what we're using now, that every person's using. So it's an evolution. And uh, it's only going to get better. Yeah. Which, uh, which director is the hardest to work with? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Probably David Zucker. Comedy. Airplane. Top Secret. I cut his last feature film in American Carol. And he's very demanding. And we would sit at the computer like nine hours at a time, just watch everything over and over nonstop. And... They, we cut that movie until the studio took it away. They were like, you have no more time, we have no more money, we're taking the movie. And we could have used more time. So, I mean, do you, have you ever just walked away? Like, I know when I'm working with producers or editors, sometimes yes. they're just like, yeah. they get up, they push the chair and they walk away, they go have their cigarette, and 20 yeah. minutes later they're better. Yeah, yeah. And we get sit down, we all, we all hit the breaking right. point. Like, it's a, it's a hard, like, business, and like being creative, you can't force creativity. Right. You can't make things happen a certain way. So you do have to take those out, outbursts and stuff. And I played professional hockey for 10 years, and I had the outlet of like smashing people on the head or punching them. In you the were an bay. enforcer, totally. No, I wasn't. Or you I, was a goal you're I was a goal scorer. You're out whatever. I scored goals, man. 
But I want that, that aggression I can't have in the Oedipi. I can't strangle my director even though sometimes right. I want to. So that's the professionalism has to draw a line. Um, but I do miss smashing things sometimes. Let, I do talk, it at home. Well, speaking of working with directors and yeah. kind of managing up, talk about that relationship because as an editor, you see the footage and you know how this puzzle is going to make sense. The director you has hope, his own vision. So, so how, yeah, do yeah. You, how do you kind of like that, make those two things yeah, happen? Yeah, totally, totally. That starts with understanding that the director and editor relationship is like sacred. Kind of like ours right here. Yeah, it's sacred. You're very close for long periods of times. So, right. You know, you're you literally trust that I brush my teeth. I hope, I hope and trust. Yeah, and I think that you're you're conscious enough to, to you know you that, love you love me enough to, my, to do that. So my hands good. are above the sheets, so no. Nah, funny I, don't, I don't like that stuff. You can go go low, go low. So, but with the director, you spend nine months sometimes in a room together, you and him. So you have to have the same aesthetics. You have to, before you even get in that room, you have to get on the same page. Yeah. You can't be with a director for nine months if you aren't getting along and understand right. what the end goal is. And then you can bounce the ideas creatively right. off each other. So it's a give and take. But at the end of the day, the most important takeaway is the editor is there to tell the director's story. So everything you do has to be for the director, not for yourself. Don't get selfish and say, oh, I'm going to just do my own cut. It all stems from telling the right story that the director wants to tell. When was the last time you were in bed with a stranger? What time is it? <laughs> Boy, you are getting into the Sundance spirit. You know what it's all about, don't you? I gotta, uh, I gotta go take a shower. Have you ever had an actor kind of call you up and be like, listen, I had this one take. Oh yeah. This take was amazing. Listen, I, I don't know if they caught it, but listen, I need you to put this one in because yeah. it was fantastic. Yeah, you know what the answer is? I say, you're right, I'll, I'll put that in. And, then, you know, and they don't know the difference. They never know the difference. <laughs> they don't even know the difference. They never know the difference. Um, so what do you, is there anything at Sundance you're pumped to see? Um, I just got in, I got the catalog, I just did the stuff. I got to look it up, to be honest, and okay. I got to try and find tickets. Tickets Fair are enough. scarce. Do you have tickets? any tickets? I do. Give me some tickets. What should I see? You want to roll with me to a movie tonight? Yeah. I just was handed tickets to the fourth. The fourth? Yes. Don't All ask right. me what it's about. I don't know. Oh, Let's we have go. a question? Sick. Okay. Let's go. The voice. It's a question from Lucas Beer. He says, what do you do when you're down on creativity or you kind of have a moment of a block? I mean, creative you... block. Creative block, usually, like the typical editor... Editor's answer is like start drinking, whatever. But to be honest, like get out of the edit cave, get out of your room, go do something completely different. Like try and break up both mentally, physically, emotionally, everything that you're, you're doing because you get in a rut. And I know it's not like the superest answer, but go outside, do something. What I like to do is I'll like, like listen to crazy music or watch something crazy or just do something that does have some inspiration for me and see where it takes me. But doing a complete altering of your course that, that you're on at that point really helps me and shake Watching it up. Watching something crazy. I'm yeah. curious, that means something different for everybody. <laughs> well, yeah, it does. A hockey player enforcer from Detroit, what does that mean for you? <sighs> well, it could mean a lot of things. You're right about that. And I'm not going to get sucked in. I'm not gonna... <laughs> this guy's had a couple of interviews. He knows how this works. Okay, are you ready for the final five? Yes, the what does that mean? Five, final five questions okay. of the interview, okay? All right. Here we go. This is number five. When you need to find your creative space, I guess this leads a little bit to your last I'll one. Answer. When you need to find your creative space, you need to go into a creative zone. What is it that you do? Like for me, literally, like go outside, go for a hike, listen to some music, something calming, soothing, so I can just like separate myself. So that's what I would do: walk and music. Walk and music. Okay. Pew. Number four. Up there. Number four. Number four. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Are you an up late kind of guy or up early kind of guy? Both. I'm a I'm a lunatic. I just I get up when I get up. I can't go back to bed. But I'm he most never creative. Sleeps. I'm most creative between like 11 o'clock to three in the morning. Things are quiet, and I'm just like rolling. So you're up late, dude. Yeah. I I'm mean, if you're dude. working that late. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. yeah. Number three. What's a creative killer that you try and avoid? What What just kills the vibe for you? Assholes. Bad people. Mean people. Especially if you're working with them and you have to work with them. Those bad people will kill it. Let me flip one. You want to flip one? Nice. Okay. Okay. Number two. The biggest film making fear. Don't act like you're tough. Oh no. Uh, what are like you afraid lo of? Losing your jam and not getting another job. 
like totally just wait a minute apart. you just did deadpool and that's something that you're still it's always on there as soon as one job is done you're looking for the next one and you hope during that time you don't lose some of that special magic or jam that you have that you just rolled you know so you gotta always like keep sharpening that tool sharpen the tool all the time don't take breaks you know for the last question let's get really close up to the camera no no, no let's stand up on the bed okay let's stand on the bed. there's no parents we can do this We have to. So for the final question, what story should be told in 2016? What do filmmakers, what should they focus this is, on? This is a really intense and personal question. That's why I got really close. <laughs> Can't they zoom it in? Why do we have to stand up? We might be out of focus. I don't know if autofocus is on or not. Is it's it good? Awesome. It is? Okay. What, what topic? Yeah. What, Dude, what, what's a story that needs to be told this year, man? I don't know. They already did Fly to the Penguins, right? They did. But, you know, we could still have Morgan okay. Freeman voice something else. I would say, whatever it is, no more sequels. For one year, no more sequels. So you won't be, for one whole year. I love that. One year, no more sequels from any independent studios, whatever, anywhere. Just stop for one year. Like a moratorium. Bachi, give it right here, buddy. Nice. No, hug. no. Hug. Hug. Thanks for hanging out at Adobe's Pill Talk. See you later.